I'm going to walk you through the process of turning an image of our Azola ferns into something that we can use as a measurement of the abundance. So basically, we're going to measure the surface area that's covered by this fern, uh, taking a couple of assumptions along the way. So we're going to assume that these photos are about the same size, basically taken from the same distance away, and uh, also assuming that these plants are mostly lying flat. And we're going to turn them into this black and white image, and we'll be able to measure, sort of count how many black pixels are there versus white pixels. So we'll be able to compare uh, more abundant or less abundant growth using these tools. So I'm going to open a new image. We're starting with a final image. And I'm going to open a new image so we can see the process. Uh, I'm using a program called GIMP, which I'll link to in the lab. Uh, this is a free program that does just about everything, all the important things that uh, something like Photoshop can do, except it doesn't cost anything. It's free, it's available on Mac and PC, and I highly recommend it if you have any kind of image editing to do. Um, very good program for that purpose. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go File Menu, Open, and I'm already in a folder that's got some of these images of the Azola plants. So I'll just grab another one here. And uh, it's asking me if I want to rotate this. I don't think that's too important. I'm just going to go ahead and let it do rotate because that's how it was oriented when I took these. Uh, I took these all with my camera on my phone. And so they should be the same uh, density of pixels, the same uh, distance away, more or less. So we're interested in what is green on here. And we're going to try to separate that out from the background. I had pretty good luck doing one of these earlier. I'm hoping the luck persists for the rest of them. Uh, we're going to use a feature called Threshold, which uh, basically decides where to make a cutoff. And things that are above the cutoff get kept uh, as black. And then things that are below the threshold get turned into white. So I'm in the Colors menu, going down to Threshold. And it's going to start me off with kind of its best guess here. So we're not going to be absolute. Uh, if you noticed in the image beforehand, this one had a little bit of this duck meal, this other plant in there. But we're interested in really getting at how much space is occupied by those Azola ferns. So I've got a slider bar on here. This is uh, changing really where the threshold is. So I can accept uh, more of these shades as something I want to keep or fewer of them. Uh, if I go too far, I start losing the ferns entirely. So uh, it's a little bit up to you. For me, probably the easiest one would be uh, this background shading there in the upper right. If that's not encroaching on the fern space, that's probably the best one for me. And it's pretty, it's not changing a whole lot. If you can see the ferns are not going, uh, coming in or out too much in that range. Um, we're going to hope for a, a big result that kind of takes care of any uncertainty as far as how much we're thresholding here. So I think I'll stick with that. And uh, what's done is just turned all the pixels into black or white. And of course, there's some cleanup that has to be done. So I'm going to switch to the eraser tool. Uh, I remember my keyboard shortcuts. I don't remember the buttons so much. So keyboard shortcut here is uh, Shift E or their eraser tool. Um, there's a little bit of dialogue that comes up over on the left here, so uh, it gives me a big old circle eraser. When I click, it turns everything white. Um, this slider bar gives me a bigger or smaller eraser, so if I want to really get in there and erase a bunch of stuff, I can make this super big. Um, I don't think it'll matter too much if we get some of those roots in there. So you want to be maybe a little more careful around where the plants are. Uh, that little root there, I'm just going to let that go and instead take out the background at that space. So that's everything that was near the ferns. Maybe a little bit of weirdness there we can take out. Uh, there are a lot of images. I think I counted 160 images. So each person will get some images, but uh, individually you shouldn't spend too much time on any one of these. So looking to get this as your final product. And uh, that's pretty much it. So you'll be doing this for a set of images, cleaning them so that you can get just pixels that correspond to where the Azola ferns are. I'm going to then do an export 
So it's not a save or a save as, those like to save in the GIMP format. Uh, let's do an export instead, and then I can bring this into a uh, later program. So export as or uh, keyboard shortcut shift, shift command E. And export as is very flexible in this program. So you can export as a JPEG. Uh, you can change basically just by changing the file extension here. I could turn this into a PNG, PDF, all over the place. So let's just stick with JPEG. Uh, for myself to keep track of these different images, I'm going to just tack a B on at the end of that. Um, so if you can, as long as you leave the elements of the original file name in there, I should be able to find these. And uh, I don't see an easy way to do this in the GIMP program, so I'm going to have to import them to a different program uh, that's going to tell me sort of how black they are, or how many black pixels there are. So let me just do export here, comes up with a little dialog box. Um, give uh, JPEG quality, so JPEG is a compression format and you can change the quality. I'm just going to leave that as it was. So it's sort of replicating the original image. Uh, export into the folder. And so that image should be ready to go. And uh, I'm going to use a program called image J for the uh, steps where I evaluate how many black pixels are on there. So if I find an easy way to show that to you, I can do that. Otherwise, I think I'll just have you send me the images and then I'll tell you what the data, uh, what data we got from those images and we can look at them later.